You're in for a special treat? Yes. Well, I guess we can leave now. Thanks, Steve. That's... <laughs> this is not a good time this minute. <laughs> Uh, most of you know Jacob Benzion Mendelssohn, and you can applaud now. <laughs> Jackie is an expert on the cantorate, uh, on chazonas. He's a jack of all trades, if I can say that. <laughs> except, ex except he's not a jack, he's really a king of a jack of all trades. So there's no style that Jackie can't really... Hold it. There's no style that Jackie doesn't really control, whether you ever heard him do an Elvis Presley Kedusha, uh, which, he, which he can do, uh, or uh, any Eastern European style or any Western American style or Debbie Friedman, whatever has been synagogue music, this guy knows how to include it and, and serve it up in different portions in the same service. Now that's really the special, the, the special sauce. So everyone walks away with at least a moment of, wow, now I remember what that's supposed to feel like, because that's a lot of what synagogue services, at least the music, is supposed to do. So without further ado, my Borough Park friend, Jackie Mendelssohn. <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, what I experienced as a child growing up in a cantorial household, and of course as a chazan uh, from the early 60s to the present day. I'm a chazan because I was born into it. My parents, Tibby and Louie, slept three kids with me on the way to a particular neighborhood so they could be within walking distance and daven with two of the greatest cantors of the generation, Moshe and David Kosovitsky. They were related. <laughs> My, uh, Moshe and David came out of, an, of course, Eastern Europe, where they served as cantors along with others, such as Hirschman, Quarten, Reutemann, etc., not to mention many, many other wonderful chazanim that didn't gain that particular notoriety, many of whom we lost in the Holocaust. That Eastern European sound was prevalent in most every American traditional shul, whether sung by cantors or ba'alet fila, lay people who would lead services but with a flair. When I took a class with the great musicologist, ethnomusicologist, Dr. Eric Werner at HUC, um, School of Sacred Music at that time on West 68th Street, he told us, guys, that's what we were then, <laughs> go to the Lower East Side and listen to a lay baltfila, so you can really get a sense of how to deliver the nusach. These daveners had imagination, they had timing, skill. Today, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Velohei Avoteinu, Elohei Avraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov. Then, Murchato Adonai Eloheinu Velohei Avoteinu Eloheinu Avraham Velohei Yitzchot Velohei Yaakov Oela Gadol Yibo Velohei Yaakov Yomom Gomel Gadol Yimom Yimegonai Yaakov Velohei 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 Yaakov
he taught me Vimale, uh, uh, which is a, uh, uh, it's the first word of a text uh, that's from the short Afarachimim that is recited when you take out the Torah. Vimale mishaloteinu b'midah tova Yeshua v'rachamim. May God answer our petition with an abundant measure of kindness and compassion. These words were sung by a Vimale boy who would be dressed in white cantorial garb, complete with the mitre on his head and a talit, and he would walk down the aisle. Everybody was under the chuppah. Bride and groom were facing him. And the boy of Himale, walking, walking, Mishalosenu, there was no such thing as Tenu in those days. <laughs> He's walking Yeshua Verachami. When he got, he timed it so he got to the bride and the groom. He lifted up his arms like a Kohen. Yeshua Veracha Me. And if there was a choir, and of course, a cousin. Vimale, Vimale. Mishalo is saying, Mishalo is saying, Vimale, Vimale. Etc. <laughs> For this, you would pay the chazan five hundred dollars, and he would pay the choir. The men got a buck a piece, and the boys got a quarter and two subway tokens. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my brother, Oliver Shalom, was, was, was a tremendous Vimale boy. And he, a normal weekend he would do, in the summer, in June, forget it, he'd do three to five Vimales a weekend. They'd somehow get in two at night, and on Sunday, all three, three, maybe four Vimales. And for this he got five bucks. That's when a pastrami sandwich was a quarter. So just think what he could have eaten. All right. In the professional cantor's world, Nusach was sung artistically. The music of the big texts was called recitative and kind of sung like arias, like I just did before. The service would be going on all of a sudden, the husband would break in to some huge piece, and they, they were, everybody got excited, and they, they even had tuning forks. And when the chazan sang a high note, you would hear tinkling, <laughs> tinkling from, from the chairs, from the tinkling, they're going, it was a C, no, it was a D, no. Emmas, <laughs> Emmas, okay, I was there, okay. So, uh, you, you know, and, and they were sung, as I said, like, like, like arias. Congregational participation was active listening sometimes humming along with the choir. In Moshe Kozovitsky's shul, it was men and boys and, and congregation. A little secret, Moshe Kozovitsky davened once a month on the blessing of the new month, and he sang the same repertoire every time. <laughs> so the, when Kozovitsky went up to the fourth, the whole shul knew he was going to go up to the fourth, so their, their humming went up to the fourth. So, and, and, and more importantly was the davening, the davening, uh, it's silent davening, but it's not silent. It's, it's a, a little sound coming out, 
and it's people davening. You don't have a text in front of you now, so we'll just make up something. We'll all say, like, they daven, they daven, they daven, they daven, they daven, they daven together. <laughs> now, remembering now, everybody had a different tonalities, and when, you, when people daven, they would, they would, certain words they would highlight. And all of a sudden, you know, like, uh, in Hashki Venu, if they didn't like somebody, Satan <laughs> Milfanein, they, they would do all kinds. Of, all, these, all these things went on. There were characters in, in those days, and they were they, they would they had no shame. So so do davening. Let's say in, any way you do. Let's go. <laughs> And it slowly die down, slowly die. <laughs> Oh, do I miss that? I miss that. Unatana Tokev, the words before Unatana Tokev. Uvechenu lecho, sa'alek kedusha, yatelo heinu melech, Unatana Tokev, kedushat hayom. That is the moment, like Pavlovian, the, the bell rings and the shul davens, Unatana Tokev, and then the cantor repeats it. Today, silence. Oh, my goodness gracious. So, uh, what I do is I talk to them and I tell them that and I tell them what to do and they do it. And, and then I feel good, but they feel good too. You know, I get, I get them to die. Yeah. To me, that davening, that davening is the tam, is the tam, it's the, it's the spirituality. You, 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 when I listen to the old recordings of uh, Kosovitsky and other chazanim on YouTube that, that were made surreptitiously by somebody with a, with a, uh, uh, a microphone in their, in their talus bag, you know, <laughs> I, I listen for the congregation davening. Maybe even, I can't wait to hear that, the din of sound in a great acoustical space. Oh, you mom and you, it's great. So when I finished high school, there were two cantorial schools in America, both in New York. Hebrew Union College School of Sacred Music and um, at the Jewish Theological, uh, Theological Seminary, uh, the Cantor's Institute. For a second, I was, I forgot the name, the Cantor's Institute. My older brother, Chazen Solomon Mendelssohn, and my parents felt I should go to HUC for several reasons. The, the faculty was varied at HUC. There was Israel Alter, who was, who was the king of the road. He was known as, he was the posseik. You know, of all the rabbis, the rabbis, then you have a posseik, there's one, there's one, he's the final word. He was the final word in anything, uh, Hebraic, Cantorial, you name it, Alter said it, that's how you did it. And at Moshe Genshoff, and Avram Shapiro, and Larry Avery, and Ben Belfer, it was a tremendous faculty. At the seminary, there was just one, it was Max Wolberg. And Max was a phenomenal teacher, and a, a, a self-made man. He taught himself how to read music. He taught himself how to read Hebrew. He taught himself Mishnah. He taught himself Gemara. And he was, he was a gadol in every one of those fields. But they thought I should get another point of view, other points of view. And even more importantly, both schools were undergraduate programs. In order to graduate at JS, JTS, with a Bachelor of Sacred Music degree, I would have to take liberal arts classes at Columbia. Where at HUC, those classes were in-house. And hopefully, they would have Rachmanis on Jackie. <laughs> because although I was talented, a student I was not. 
My first, uh, by the way, since we're talking about the schools, um, we have uh, important people here. Uh, we have the immediate former director of the DFSSM, Debbie Friedman School of Music. I don't see him, where is he? Richard Cohn, there he is. We have the current director, Jill Abramson. Jill. Is, is Nancy Abramson here? No, she didn't make it. Uh, Nancy Abramson just stepped down as the director of uh, the H.L. Miller Cantorial School at JTS. And Rafi Frieder uh, has agreed to, to take on the, the reins. Um, on a temporary basis, but hopefully, you know, uh, on a full-time basis. Now, as there are other schools also, we have here the founder of Hebrew College, Scott Sokol. Where is Scott? And, uh, and uh, I'm not sure somebody yell about who, who is the director of the AJR? Michael Katzman. It's that name. Okay. <laughs> I can't hear. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. So, my first and only student position, which led into full time after graduation, was the conservative synagogue of Riverdale, where I was paid the hefty sum of $6,500 for the year, and, uh, and uh, it was, I was the highest paid student in the school. I, get, I don't know how that happened, but I was. I was very, very happy to do that. Uh, a quick word, and I, I didn't, it's not even written out. I'll just do it from my head, uh, be very afraid. Uh, a quick word about Rabbi Cantor relationships. Back in the day, it could be, th there could be problems. I mean, there could be problems. But, but I'm talking, I'm talking problems. We're, talk about, we're talking about war. I mean, I, I know of two cases. No names it, 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 in the reform world, just when I was a kid, I didn't know from reform. I didn't know from mixed choirs. The first time I heard a mixed choir around the corner at David Kosovitsky's shul, I was afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid. And, and within 15 minutes, I was fine because it was so gorgeous and so beautiful. And there was, there was a reform congregation in Borough Park. It was called the, the Proget Progressive Synagogue. And I once passed that shul and I heard the organ. I ran across to the other side of the street. <laughs> but when I got to HUC and I, I, I heard that incredible music of Max Helfman and Isidore Fried, and I, I, wanted, I wanted to sing with an organ myself. Um, unfortunately, I, I hardly ever got to sing with choirs except for you know, in some shuls I had professional quartets. But I digress. Don't let me digress, for goodness sake. So, so the, 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 the war, back to the war. I mean, the, a particular reform cantor with a gorgeous voice, it was the first time I, I was a kid. It was the first time I ever heard a reform service. And after two minutes I was at home because the voice was gorgeous and he knew Chazanut, he injected Chazanut into the classical reform uh, literature and it was amazing. And I saw that the rabbi in the middle of the sermon became flustered. Later I found out that the two of them, Cantor and Rabbi, were warring and the Cantor had Turkish blood in his veins, yes? And he was very upset with the rabbi for some reason, I don't know what. And this particular rabbi needed the written page. And it was five pages long and he took out page three. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry to say that. And in another case, in the, in, the, in the conservative world, the 
rabbi and the cantor were warring. And they built, they had a shul, then across the street, they built a new shul, and in the old shul was the offices and the Hebrew school and um, the, uh, the daily minion. But services were in the new shul, and there was only one office in the new shul. It was adjacent to the bima. So the rabbi claimed the office. So the cantor said, I'm going to have to like knock on the door to go into so I could put on my gown. This is not, this, I, this, is, this can't be. So the rabbi had a picture of his wife and kids and everything, and he claimed the office. So the following Shabbat morning, the rabbi walked into his office, seeing the cantor with his foot on the desk and pictures of his family. <laughs> Thank God we're living in a world where these young cantors-to-be and cantors go to school with their rabbinic partners, get to know them and love them. And there's harmony, which we love. Okay. In my final year of school, something radical and amazing happened. The first female cantorial student, Barbara Ostfeld, joined the HUC student body. Yes. Barbara was and is wonderful with, with a voice from heaven, just ethereal, beautiful, beautiful voice. And the great posek, Israel Alter, fell in love. He loved coaching her. He welcomed her. The students welcomed her. The school welcomed her. She had a wonderful, long, productive career, even became the head of placement for the American Conference of Cantors, the ACC, and has, ju has just retired. Now, because of halachic issues, it took the conservative movement a good deal longer to break the glass ceiling. The Law Council of the Rabbinical Assembly finally voted yay on the so-called women's issue in 1988. The Cantors Assembly had many Orthodox members, and it took until, it took until 1991 for women to become formal members. I mean, you know, it was, it was a break in the organization and members left, it was tough, it wasn't easy to do. And as Ricky Lippitz told me, is Ricky here? Yes, there she is. I got this right from Ricky. The CA leadership couldn't have been nicer during that three year period helping that cohort of students, Nancy Abramson, Marla Barugal, Ricky Lipitz, Avima Radovsky, and Renee Colson, Zichrona Livracha, with placement, pension, and all issues that the membership had. Finally, in 1991, women were formally inducted into the CA, and we were whole. Going back in time, cantors were not considered clergy by the IRS until the Cantors Assembly, with a team of lawyers, a lot of money, the lawyers headed by Herb Garten, an incredible warrior for Chazanut, they won the Salkoff case in 1966. Cantor Abe Salkoff, I knew him as a great guy, Abe Salkoff. Played the horses, great guy. <laughs> Baltimore, lived right near Pimlico. Abe had been turned down by the IRS when he applied for parsonage. Finally, the American cantor was now, and had now, gained full clergy status. Now getting back to me. <laughs> From 1966 to 1972, my conservative congregation was much like my modern orthodox shul. Those daveners could hold their own with anyone. No professional choir, unfortunately. So I started a volunteer choir as best as I could. I, I, I don't think I could conduct a train, but all right. Uh, I, found, I found my true choral calling when I started a children's choir. I taught those kids all my own, my old Borough Park tunes and melodies. 
and we had a ball doing it. I'd like to bring up my colleague, whom you all know, Faith Steinschneider, to come and join me. Give you a taste of uh, the kind of stuff that we used to do. Um, two birds with one stone. I'm doing at this minute. I'm doing my Friday submission to Facebook. A good night, Shabbos. It's great to see you all. Here I am at the North American Jewish Choral Festival. Yes. I'm doing under the aegis of the Zamir Koral Foundation, founded by the great Mati Lazar, who <laughs> simply the finest choral conductor of Jewish music in the world. And here we are in beautiful Tarrytown, and I'm calling my colleague Faith Steinschneider, who is not only a great chazan, but a great teacher of chazanim. But I knew her when. Uh, in uh, 1972, I, I had a, uh, a, a phenomenal children's choir, and then I had a teen choir. And um, Faith was actually in that choir. And <laughs> sometimes we would do a Vahuyash Mienu in Musaf, and the choir would hum, and that means you. I'll tell you when. <laughs> The who Don't go 
anywhere. Oh, you got to know. You can, you can, except it's not going to be there. And a good Shabbos. Oh, what? And a good Shabbos. A good Shabbos. Oh, wait a second. Good Shabbos. Shabbos. That's the end of my broadcast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, here we are. So, in 72, I was called to the post as cantor of Beth Torah Congregation, North Miami Beach. I like that. Called to the post. My uncle Nehemiah, he was very... He was a very, uh, you know, uh, erudite man. He said, no, don't say you got the job. Say, you were called to the post. <laughs> so ever since then, I was called to the post. I became, I became famous there because the lead singer in my teen choir was Faith Steinsnyder. <laughs> <laughs> Here is a little Misha Asa Nisim uh, that we uh, used to do then with choir and David. Chazan David Perper is going to come and help us out. Dovidal! The French is Perper. Perpe. <laughs> so, okay. so let's find the key. Every Chazan has a tuning fork. Must have a tuning fork. Quick! Chazan is mugged in Central Park. He's out for half an hour. He wakes up, he feels his bones. He does, <laughs> give out! <laughs> I'm so sorry that I did that, I'm so sorry. Here I am in a moment. Okay. You did it well. <laughs> Nisim lavoteinu, nisim nisim lavoteinu, vigal otam, vigal otam, may of the do. Have you been going strong? 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 Have you been
say, I never. Okay. Oh, that was a rush. Who wouldn't want to go to shul to see, to hear that? Anybody? Raise your hand. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So, in 76, I moved back to New York, became the cantor of Temple Gates of Prayer in Flushing. A lot of weddings. We used to call it Our Lady of Perpetual Simchas. <laughs> one of one of the few one of the few congregations left at, in, in the conservative movement that, that still wanted to hear uh, Chazanut, and uh, it was mostly older people. But it, it was a rush. I, I had ten wonderful years there, and uh, um, I I, uh, I had the, uh, the, the well. If we're talking about the American cantor, many American cantors. Had, a, had, the, had caught the opera bug at some point in their lives. Why? Because it's, uh, it's Mount Everest in terms of singing. It's, it's Mount Everest. And, and I, was, I, was, uh, I was an American, so I got it too. And, uh, and I, I, I became a member of the American Opera Center at Juilliard. And thank God that I did, because that's where I met Freda. <laughs> And to quote Freda, had it been available to her when she finished high school and certainly college, she would have gone into the cantorate had, she, had it been a possibility. But she got there. She got there. She, it, she it, right in the middle of things, she enrolled in HUC. And uh, the long trip down the West Side Highway, and she was in my class, which was very difficult. It's not good. She was in my class, and I said, and I would say to her, "Dear, do you know the quiz? Uh, you know this 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 week?" She said, "No," and she made me crazy. And of course, she knew it perfectly. And, and that was uh, that's it. But uh, <laughs> so during my tenure there, um, the musical tide was turning. Uh, in the reform movement, classical composers such as Helfman, Janowski, Fried, etc., were starting to be uh, replaced and joined by American sounding tunes by, of course, Debbie Friedman, Jeff Klepper, Dan Friedlander, many, many other talented composers. Uh, an American sound, if you will. Why not? In uh, 19th century Berlin, Jewish music sounded like Schubert. So I wanted, I'm an American. I played, played Little League. By the way, Genshoff, the great Moshe Genshoff, was a shortstop in Toledo. He, 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 uh, he, he was born in, in Russia, Odessa. And he, they moved, he was eight years old when he moved to, to America. And, and very soon, he was playing shortstop for the Toledo Mud Hens, or whatever they were called. <laughs> He used to love watching the Yankee game. I'd go for my lesson. There was a pitcher named Mike Messina. He says, Jackie, Jackie, let's watch, let's watch the Yankee game. Mashiach is pitching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry for delving into things that, that I shouldn't have. <laughs> Jewish music sounded like Schubert, OK? Debbie Friedman's influence had not reached the conservative movement until Sometime, I don't remember when, sometime in the 80s, and I have to, I don't like to toot my own horn, but I had something to do with it in the conservative movement. I chaired a CA convention at the Concord, and I invited her 
because I was singing her music. And some conservative chazanim were singing her music. And, and my congregation was loving it and singing along. And so this was, this was when the time when she, when she was still in a wheelchair and, and, um, and it was tense because there were people in the room there that didn't want her to succeed because they felt she was, it, it, it's gonna be the end of Nusach and, and so on and so forth, I don't have to tell you. Um, one wise guy I actually had, I, I won't tell you exactly what happened, but uh, he, was, he was out of there and uh, he misbehaved and Debbie got up there and in front of not only the, the uh, conservative cantorate, uh, but the leadership, including the great late uh, Sam Rosenbaum, who was the father figure of the CA, a great, great chazan, a great man, a composer, an author, a Yiddishist, and he used to rail every year at his report, the executive vice president's report, about the camp music, it's gonna ruin Nusach, and da da da, da da da, and there's Sam sitting in the front, and Debbie Friedman goes, the Meru, let's go, Rosenbaum, tears running down his cheeks. Because coming right after that was in the liturgy. He said, oh my God, we can do two things at once. Yeah. So, so that was a wonderful thing. Um, in 1986, I started my cantor at a Temple Israel Center in White Plains. My predecessors, William Wolf, who's still with us, I, what is he, 98? <coughs> yep, 98 on Sunday. What a chazan, what a bass voice, Every, a bass cantor. Oh, well, he was so good, so good. And after him, Alberto Mizrahi, none other than. So, there was a big tradition of chazanut in that shul, so I, I came in on the wings of what they had done. And so I was able to do that, but as things moved along, um, I and other chazanim didn't feel as comfortable singing, for instance, big recitatives, as the old congregational guard was, was fading away. And the new generation wanted to hear American sounds. So I incorporated those sounds while hanging on um, to the nusach. Recitatives were replaced with sound bites coming from the simple, the simple nusach. Um, um, there was a great Shabbos way back in North Miami Beach uh, where uh, Ganchoff, I invited Ganchoff. Why did I invite him to daven in my shul? Because I never heard him daven live. And I wanted to hear him live, so I daven and I, I, I I uh, accompanied him with, with my teen and children's choir, humming ex hummers extraordinaire, and and he sang the following Tikanta Shabbat, which Faith transcribed. Okay, so so he starts he starts like this. Uh, mm, hmm. So oh, I hummed in the right yes. So he goes Tikanta Shabbat, and Rabbi Lipschitz goes. We turn to page. 302. And I, <laughs> hello? <laughs> so so, so Genshoff, Genshoff, he took us to, he repitched. He went, okay. Tikanta Shabbat Rotsito Korben Hotel. Si Vito Perushem, si Durin Sochel. Mi Ange Holy Olam Kavodin Holu. To a meho Chaim Zahu. The Gabo Havin de Vahorre. Yetula Bahor. 
In thirds, Here's the best line of the thing. Oh, so we agree, he will have fun, he will be a havoc, 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 he will be a etc. Sound bites. Okay? I myself, I would try and sing a recitative, and my, I could feel my ears becoming red. I felt like it was, it was like an uh, egg on my face or something. It was, the, they, they weren't prepared for something like that. Except for the times when Gordon Tucker, Zolzain Gesund, my Rav, said, Jackie, I want you to sing a Wretched Tativ this show. I was like, what? He said, yes, tell me which one you want to sing. I said, you may not like this choice, Tikanta Shabbat. And of course, he goes to the, the carbonate and, you know, he says, give it to me, give it to me. So I sang Alter's Tikanta Shabbat, which is a magnificent piece. And Tikanta Shabbat is a beautiful, beautiful thing. And he said, sing it for me. He took out a notepad. I sang it for him. He took notes on what I did. Came up next Shabbos morning, right before Musaf. He said, Cantor Mendelssohn's going to sing Tikanta Shabbat. And I want, to let, I want to let you know what to expect. As you look at your Sidhu Rim, certain things are going to happen. He's going to modulate here. I think it's because blah, 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 uh, blah, blah, blah. When I started singing that kan Tikanta Shabbat, 200 people sat up in their chairs like a dog on point. <laughs> it's like they were so excited. These, these are the kind of things you want to do, you, you can do, you know, if you have a partner that, that, will, that will work with you. I, I should say, personally, I don't need chazanut to be prevalent. I just need chazanut to have a seat at the table. That's all, that's all I need, just a seat at the table. Okay, in today's world, nusach is done, I'm afraid to say not artistically, with a few exceptions, of course. I'm sad to say that many colleagues, even colleagues, not just uh, lay people, does that mean five minutes? Okay, thank you. Paint by the numbers. So what do I mean, paint by the numbers? Next phrase. So compare that to the to the Tikanta Shabbat uh, that you heard. Artistic davening. I teach that to my a Shabbat class at JTS, and they learn it in one, in one session. It's, it's, you know, it's so many, it's a one note type of thing. It's just what they have to learn, what one has to learn is the attitude, the delivery, the timing. Notes, you, you, you need a professional, experienced person to show you the timing and the delivery. The future is up to the Chazanim. Um, I think I said this already. Um, I'm hopeful that students from all of the schools, they learn it in schools. It's crazy if you learn it and don't use it. So I'm hopeful that they, they will lobby in the nicest way 
they will lobby um, for this incredible, incredible art form, prayer form. Um, so, uh, so what I'm, as I said, asking for is simply a seat at the table. By the way, I teach, I team teach a class with Alana Arian. And, excuse me, with Alana Arian's daughter, I always say Alana Arian. I always say, no, wait a second, I got it right. I team teach with Alana Arian, and her mom Mary is right here. And oh my, yes, I got it right, look at me. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's, it's a song, it's, it's a class that Richard Cohn uh, founded, and it was his idea. Uh, it's called uh, Improvisation Integration. Alana is really the composer of American music um, for the synagogue. She's really the now hap happening composer. She's brilliant, multi-instrumentalist, and a uh, heart of uh, molten gold. And uh, we team teach this class, and we fuse, we fuse the 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 new with the old, and the old with the new. One tiny example, and I'll only do a, a little bit of it. Uh, so you're gonna come in with Vishamru after I start with a little uh, Vishamru by Arya Leib Rutman, who was Genshoff's idol. He tried, to be, he tried to be Rutman. He only heard him daven once, but he said, that was it. I had to be Rutman for the rest of my life. And you could, see, you could hear there was one good recording of Rutman left that you could hear Genshoff in it. So, Rutman does this. V'shameru v'nei together in the sandbox for many, many years. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.